Uh, the next thing that I thought was pretty cool on this was Maps. iPhone comes with uh, Google Maps built in, and as you might expect, so does the, the uh, G1. They're both pretty nice. Um, in both of these, I've done a little di driving directions, so that's why that's up. But both of these allow you to go to my location. Um, in the iPhone, it has it right down here in the bottom. The G1, you actually have to hit a button to get to it. But it shows uh, our location right here, and it's pretty spot on. That's not the actual address I'm at, but it's pretty close. Um, one thing that I wanted to show you, both of these have satellite view. If you really want to see how that works, I mean, maps.google.com, it's not all that exciting. It, it can be pretty neat, but that's been around forever. The thing that is nice, and I'll just close the iPhone so I can show you this on the G1, that is nice about this G1 is it has um, what we call street view. And it's built in. iPhone doesn't seem to offer it yet. But we can just pick a location here and we're already in Street View and it puts you right in Street View now normally it's not in this mode but we've got it in something called Compass Mode as well we'll turn it off real quick just to show you Compass Mode's off move it around nothing happens um, and you would just use your touch screen to move it around and it's it takes a little getting used to but it's not too hard to do however if you want to do it the easy way put it in compass mode and you just tilt that phone to look up or down on the street you turn it and you can see the Sam's Club across the street uh, let's see what else here you can see probably see my office in there now nah lower yeah there we go alright so this is a pretty nice feature. Uh, it's not very useful, but it is pretty cool to play with. So I kind of like that over the iPhone, just that it's offered in this. Uh, and it's not offered in the iPhone. Maybe it'll come soon. We'll see. So we'll close out of that and take a look at something else that you probably use uh, as much as, if not more, than the maps. And that's the browser. We've got a browser button real, real close on both of these screens. And I've set this so it pulls up JoeTech.com on both of them. Uh, the funny thing is, I'm on Wi-Fi on my iPhone because I don't get real good uh, G3 here in my office. It's great everywhere else, just not in my office. And it seems to almost load faster on the G3, uh, or the 3G on the, the G1 Google phone than it does on the iPhone. Um, couple things to note in here that are kind of interface problems, I think. Well, it, it's really a matter of perception and, and taste. On the iPhone, you can double tap and it zooms in. And it, it does kind of a smart zoom. See, it, it found the right amount of width to zoom into just to get that amount of text. The G1, if I double click, it just kind of sits there wondering what I want it to do. And then it tries to go to feed burner because it thinks I clicked on a link. So we're just going to tell it to go back if we can figure that out. Well, how do I go back? Um, all right, we'll just hit that button. So it's not as intuitive. The other thing the iPhone has while the G1's loading back up is the, uh, of course, the pinch. And I hear that the G1 has that on its way. It apparently has the ability to do it, but it just hasn't implemented it yet. But what the G1 does have is it has your zoom buttons here. So I can zoom out if I want to see everything at once. There's all my advertisers. Advertise on my site so you can be in my videos. Uh, and then I, if I tap on here, maybe I'll get, nope, I just clicked on an advertiser. So it's a little kludgy working the browser. It's, it's not horrible, but I'm, maybe I'm just used to the iPhone, but if you tap anywhere that's not a link, you should get a, main, a, a zoom option. So I can zoom back in here. It's a little kludgy. So 
you know, clearly, I, I think the iPhone wins in the browser department here, except for the fact that there's limitations that the iPhone has with its browser that are overcome by the fact that uh, the G1 is so open, uh, and there's more advancements, I'm sure, coming down the pipe with the G1. So anyway, we'll get out of both of those and test the last thing that I want to show you, and that's the camera. I have to bring it up here. And I accidentally went into my uh, news feeds. Open my camera on the iPhone. Both of them look a little bit dark when you pull them up. The G1 looks a little bit cleaner. Looks like a little bit of a brighter image. Um, looking at my logo here. So the G1 looks a little bit cleaner. And that may be because it is. It is a, a higher resolution camera. The iPhone has only a 2.0 2 megapixel and the G1 has a 3.2 megapixel. Uh, the iPhone's a little bit handier if you're taking a shot, a, a vertical shot like this, because the button's right on the front. However, if you turn it, uh, the, the G1 is a little handier because the button is right on the top. And so you just hit that button on either one to take a photo. So that's pretty much it for the video. Um, all all the, the real exciting video stuff's in here but there's a ton of pictures and a lot more detail on uh, on both of these phones, the specs and how some of this stuff works on JoeTech.com. So just go ahead and head to www.JoeTech.com and you get the, the full review there.